hello students welcome back to my channel in my previous video of class 10 i have discussed with you the first poem dust of snow written by robert frost and today i'm here and i'm going to discuss with you and give you line by line explanations of the second poem of class 10 english first flight the poem fire and ice again written by robert frost Fire and Ice is a complete allusion to Dante's Inferno. Students, Dante Alighieri is an Italian poet and in his book Inferno, he wrote about the concept of hell and also uh, the stages of hell. Robert Frost's poem of Fire and Ice, okay, condenses what Dante writes in his book about health frost tells about how he agrees with dante that the deepest realms of health are icy he also uses figurative language to portray what health looks like as well as who is imprisoned there robert frost refers to the different reasons that sinners are sent to hell and the degree of consequence for wrongdoing on earth. Fire and Ice is a short poem of nine lines. It gives vent to the view that uh, patience like or human emotions like anger, hatred, desire, indifferences, etc. seem to govern the whole world and may become the cost of its destruction or its uh, tragic end. Now let's talk about the author. Robert Lee Frost, born in March 26, 1874, and uh, died in January 29, 1963, was an American poet. His work was initially published in England uh, before it was published in America. He is highly regarded for his realistic depictions of rural life and uh, his command over, uh, over of American colloquial speech. Robert Frost uh, was honored frequently during his lifetime and uh, receiving four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. And also, uh, he became one of America's rare public literary figures, uh, almost an artistic institution. He was also uh, awarded the Congressional Gold Medal in 1960 uh, for his poetical works. The poem Fire and Ice by Robert Frost revolves around the theme that uh, Human emotions are destructive when allowed to run amok or uh, out of control. Uh, that uh, human emotions are, you know, like uh, dangerous and destructive when they are out of control. Uh, uh, they can destroy a person morally, mentally, and physically. So the poet impresses upon the readers. Uh, that uh, the destructive results of bearing ill feeling like greed, lust, conflict, hatred, and uh, intolerance, etc. This simply means relationships can be destroyed by wanting something too much or by hating something. Uh, this is how uh, the poet uses the symbol of fire and ice to show how desires and hatred contribute to uh, making the world stand at the verge of chaos or destruction. And uh, this could be connected to personal relationships or connected globally to relations between countries. Now we have come to the poem and just before we read it, students I would like to remind you that this poetry is a symbolic poem 
fire and ice symbolizes two uh, opposite things okay fire symbolizes desire and ice symbolizes hate or hatred and uh, this uh, these two elements could be the you know like could bring uh, destruction or end to the world okay so now let's read the poem fire and ice some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice now let's go with the line by line explanations and let's begin with the first stanza some say the world will end in fire some say in ice so in the first two lines the first two lines the poet says that he had often heard people telling that uh, the world will come to an end in two ways so basically the poet is talking about the opinion of people okay the opinions of different people uh, different people have different opinions and uh, uh, different opinions of uh, the world coming to an end okay and the opinions are of two ways uh, the first one uh, the first one is uh, you know like the world coming to an end is because of fire okay the first opinion is of uh, coming the world coming to an end is of fire and the second is that uh, you know like some say it may end that means some say uh, the world may end um, because of ice uh, here the poet very interestingly uh, he has used two elements okay uh, these two elements what are the elements uh, the first one is fire and the second one is ice so he is comparing this fire and ice Uh, with two different human emotions okay uh, two human emotions fire is equated to desire what is desire uh, it is a strong feeling uh, to own something or you can say wanting too much to have something uh, it could be like greed lust uh, and etc okay uh, so uh, so according to this uh, whatever you know like whatever you get you will not be feeling satisfied and you will want uh, uh, you will want it more and more and so it goes on like the fire and uh, the second line some say in ice okay here ice is equated or uh, equated to hatred so the poet says that these two elements that means fire and ice or uh, desire and uh, hate or hatred can bring uh, uh, about the end of the world or could bring uh, the destructions of the world okay so now let's go to the next line or the next point from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire so what did the poet say here the poet feels that or the poet feels that um, uh, that desire is such a dangerous thing desire that means fire okay desire is a very dangerous thing because it keeps on growing okay it keeps on growing nobody is satisfied with what they have it just grows on it just grows on just like fire and it engulfs the whole world and destroyed and what did the next line said i hold with those who favor fire so uh, the poet says that he favors those people or the people who believe that the world is going to end or uh, uh, the world is going to uh, uh, going to you know like uh, come to an end because of fire or desire so now let's move to the second stanza but if it had to perish twice okay here uh, the, the first the second stanza uh, the first line says uh, uh, use the word if conditional okay so here it says that but if it had to perish twice the idea or the concept of you know uh, the poets using or the poets saying that the world will perish twice is a complicated 
okay is complicated idea or 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 concept which is you know like uh, which different people has different explanation but you children you just understand that uh, the poet is not saying that the world will come to an end twice or the world is going to perish twice he is just trying to say that if uh, uh, if there were no fire or if there were no desire of fire then he is taking the second option that ice would be the you know like uh, would be strong enough to destroy the world okay so he says but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate so the poet is saying that he knows enough of enough of hatred okay he has seen hatred or he had experienced hatred because uh, he is comparing here eyes to hatred and he is saying there is a lot of hatred among people uh, 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 such hatred that uh, nobody is bothered about each other each one has become so insensitive that uh, they do not want to think or they forgot to think about others at all so the next line also says uh, to say that for destruction ice is also great okay ice is also great so he is trying to say that the earth will come or the earth will become frozen okay the world, the earth will become frozen because uh, of the inactivities okay of these human beings because nobody uh, uh nobody will be bothered about each others and he is saying that uh, for destruction ice is also great and ice is also uh, quite enough okay and he is saying uh, uh, in the last line and would suffice he is saying that ice is also great and would suffice suffice means uh, sufficient or be sufficient or enough so he is trying to say or the poet is saying that ice is equally good like fire to destroy the world so he is comparing fire and ice to desire and hatred and these two elements or these two emotions are equally good to destroy the whole world okay now uh, let's discuss about the literary devices or the poetical devices used in the poetry the first one is imagery uh, what is imagery uh you know like in the simplest way uh i can tell you that uh, whenever you read a line in a poem uh, uh an image is formed in your mind okay uh, for an instance uh in the first line of the poetry some say the world will end in fire so when we read this particular line so an image is formed in our mind that the world will come to an end with fire okay uh, so and now the second one or the second uh, poetical device uses symbolism or symbol uh, so it is a uh, words uh, which are used to signify special themes or ideas okay instead of their literal meanings okay which is not you know like not to be interpreted or explained or uh, understood literally so it has got uh, specified or uh, signified special themes or ideas okay for example here fire symbolizes desire while ice is the symbol of hatred so uh, the third one is assonance students i have already explained in my previous video about assonance uh, it is a repetition of a vowel sound and uh, here in this poetry we could see uh, uh, in the line i hold with those who favor fire it's in the first stanza the fourth line uh, i hold with those who favor fire here the sound of you know like o sound okay or uh, o sound in the line is being uh, repeated okay so that is what we call assonance the fourth literary device uh, used in this poetry is anaphora okay uh, what is anaphora Uh, it refers to the repetitions of a word or expression uh, in the first part of some verses in the poetry uh, for example the, in this poetry the first and the second line some say the world will end in fire some say in ice so the expression 
or the words some say is being repeated in the first and the second line so this you know like type of literary devices used by the poet is known as anaphora so the fifth and the last one uh, of the literary device used in this poetry is alliteration as you all know uh, alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound at the start of two or more closely placed words for example uh, in this poetry the first line you know like uh, world will okay you you will come to know the uh, world will uh, the sound uh, the sound of w is being repeated in the first line and also in the fourth line the sound of f or the sound of fa in favor fire is being repeated okay this is called alliteration and that's all the uh, uh, the poetical devices used in this poetry the poem fire and ice gives no explicit message it only uh, juxtaposes two contradictory terms fire and ice okay the poet really wants us to understand that the world is threatened by both the elements Uh, the elements of fire and ice okay and or you can say the emotions the emotions of uh, excessiveness of anger conflict greed uh, or the emotions of indifference and hatred the poet also appeals to us that uh, we must try to save ourselves from these patients and uh, we must try to establish a world in which uh, there is no scope of excessive negative feelings uh, so uh, we can understand that uh, only uh, the power of love can mollify fire and melt ice okay so now uh, that's all that we can understand from the poetry hope uh, you understand well and thanks for listening that's all for today's lesson stay home stay safe bye bye